like to call the 25th reg I I'd like to call the 25th regular council meeting uh, to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Challenges are what make life interesting. Overcoming them is what makes life meaningful. Very appropriate. Will the clerk please call the roll? There are four present here and five remote. Okay, and uh, Marcus Savaglio is excused. Next, would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our uh, March 16th meeting and our, our special common council meeting on March 30th. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. A motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and Second. support. Is there any discussion? Got it. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Aye. Next item is public forum. Do we have anyone signed up? There is no one this evening. Thank you very much. Next item is going to be a presentation of the 2020 community survey results by City Administrator Daryl Hoffland. Uh, thank you, Mayor Vandersteen. Uh, tonight I will, I will present the results of the 2020 community survey. Uh, thanks, Meredith, for assisting me in, in the PowerPoint presentation. Again, the goal of the, uh, the community survey is to develop, develop an understanding of the views and preferences of city residents. Uh, survey questions follow, follow a three-year cycle. And this past year, uh, in January and February, a condensed uh, question bank was utilized. This, this survey bank also, we felt, was more mobile phone friendly. The survey was completed using SurveyMonkey, an online survey instrument. Some paper responses were received as well. Uh, the request for citizen input uh, really advances the city's key focus area of the strategic plan, which is communication. Of the 39,000 plus residents who are 18 years of age or older, the participation rate was 1,455, which is 3% approximately the same percentage as last year. Uh, with assuming randomness of the responses, the results are projected to be 95% certain with a plus or minus 3% margin of error. Uh, the 2020 participation rate was 14% higher in the number of responses from 2019. And going back five years, the 2016 survey, over 200% increase in the number of residents who have participated. For distribution of this community survey, the city relied to market it on the city and departmental websites, social media outlets, uh, city hall main entrance monitor, city-owned electric electronic message boards, cable TV, WSCS, shoreline metro buses, including the transfer station. We also had uh, designated computers at Me Public Library Senior Activity Center, paper copies for those uh, who uh, are electronically challenged uh, or, or prefer hard copy, uh, city clerk's office, Mead Public Library, and the Senior Activity Center. Uh, again, paper copies were available. And again, we want to uh, send our appreciation or thank you out to local newspapers, radio, and community partners and organizations who promoted the 2020 community survey. The typical survey participant was uh, check the box uh, of 56 to 65. That was the most frequent uh, survey participant. Uh, as far as race, identified themselves as white and were a resident for 25 years or more. This is uh, fairly consistent with past surveys. Uh, last year skewed slightly younger 
with the average age of the survey participant being 45. Now getting into the questions for 2020. Uh, in response to the question of the overall quality of life, 80% of the participants checked excellent or good. This is an increase, again, over the five-year period uh, where we've asked a similar question, an 18% increase. In response to the question of the city's overall direction, a 79% indicated improving or steady. This is a, approximately a 37% gain over the five years. This is consistent with last year's survey where 78% uh, identified uh, the direction the city is uh, moving uh, as improving or steady. Uh, in looking at uh, other uh, checks uh, from the uh, participants' response, uh, for those that did uh, in the past uh, check the declining box, uh, it was only 21% of this survey Going back to 2016, it was as high as 42%. So a significant change in the overall feel by residents as far as the direction of our community. In response to the question of overall performance of the city, 81% indicated excellent or good. It's a 19% increase since 2016. Uh, last year, 2019, instead of 81% checking excellent or good, it was 73%. So in one year alone, approximately an 8% increase. For, in response to the question of focusing on priorities that matter, 66% identified excellent or good. Uh, again, this is a favorable response compared to just one year ago, where 50% of the residents check those boxes. So in one year, a 16% increase in the sense of focus on priorities that matter. For delivering services efficiently, 76% checked either excellent or good. This compares to 65% uh, in 2019. If I go all the way back to 2016, uh, only 55% felt we were delivering services efficiently. So a little over 20% increase in excellent or good ratings since 2016. The next slide discusses the responses of keeping residents informed and managing taxpayers' money. For the response of excellent or good for keeping residents informed, 73% checked excellent or good. This compares to 63% in 2019 and compares to 41% uh, in 2016. So a significant change over that time. So it's rewarding for me and the staff and should be for you as council members, with this being one of our key focus areas of the city's strategic plan, uh, a significant increase over that five years from 41% to 73, checking the box excellent or good. For managing the taxpayer's money, uh, excellent or good, combined percentage was 74%. Last year it was 54%. So a 20% gain in one year. In 2016, it was only 50%. So a, a significant gain over a five year period of time. For reviewing the city's service level, uh, excellent or good responses overall increased across all different categories. Uh, this slide identifies those that had the most uh, significant increase in positive response. Zoning land use, support for neighborhoods, transit services, and overall city administration. Other significant gains over the five years were community events, street maintenance, recycling garbage, and finally attracting businesses. For the top five rated city departments, in the order of top rated, uh, fire department number one, uh, Mead Public Library number two, police department number three, and a tie for fourth place was 
uh, city clerk and senior services. Fire department and the library have always been in the top one and two slots each year over the five years the surveys have been completed. Police department has always been in the top five city rated departments and, see, and senior services has uh, been in the top five for three of the five years that we've, that we've been conducting the survey. Many departments achieve significant gains in the excellent or good ratings over the five years. This next slide identifies those that uh, had the top five uh, increases in an excellent or good rating. City administration, city administrator's office, common council, finance department, transit, and the mayor's office. The next slide also is an indication of five departments that have uh, experienced a significant gain as well over the five years. Municipal court, planning and development, property assessing, city attorney's office, and finally building inspection. A drill down into the, the area of communi communication we ask residents, where do you obtain uh, information about the city? The city's website was number one at 74%. Uh, this is an increase of 12% in just one year. So if you compare 2019 to 2020 survey re uh, results, 62% uh, versus 74%. Sheboygan Press was 58, uh, The Sun, was 52, WHBL 48, and for the first time appearing in the top five sources of city information is next door. The city's website uh, has been on all of the uh, top five uh, for prior uh, city surveys. Uh, um, in the past, Sheboygan Press was number one for three of the five years. And as I mentioned, uh, next door uh, is appearing for the first time uh, as one of the top five sources of information. Uh, the city had two open-ended questions as part of the community survey. Uh, one was critical projects or initiatives. Uh, the common council members have received electronically a copy of those individual comments. In 2020, uh, a little over 1,000 individual comments uh, were received. This compares to last year, 850 comments. So citizens felt uh, the need to share and provide more comments, uh, which was, again, very interesting to read. The top four categories were street repair, affordable housing, business development, and, and the last was neighborhood revitalization. The last question, question 12 of the survey, asked about general comments of city government. Number one comment category were road related. In 2020, overall 717 comments were received. Um, this compares, I guess, favorably. We're asking for input after all. Uh, 555 comments were received just a year ago. So a significant increase, uh, almost 20, 25%. As sort of a recognition that we really want a high, um, survey responses. We actually work with the Chamber of Commerce of Sheboygan County to provide a $100 gift certificate. Uh, a resident by the name of Elizabeth uh, Hildebrandt uh, was the lucky uh, winner of the $100 certificate. On the last uh, slide here identifies her comments. After several years living in a very large city, coming home to Sheboygan has brought calm to our family life. We especially appreciate the kindness of the community and the peaceful lakefront and community events we've enjoyed since moving here almost four years ago. Grateful to community leaders who care, a chamber of commerce, a chamber of commerce working to make Sheboygan better and the protection of our police and fire offer, offering our city. So again, any questions or comments regarding the 2020 community survey? Again, thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your presentation, Daryl. Next, we'll move on to mayor's announcements. Well, since our uh, special city council meeting last week, we've seen an outbreak of coronavirus at the Sunny Ridge Nursing Home in Sheboygan. 
The Sheboygan County Public Health Department immediately evaluated the situation. Residents were isolated and the staff that had contact with the COVID-19 positive staff member were relieved from their duties until tested. They requested an emergency shipment of personal protection equipment from the state. Uh, I was contacted by Kalinda Napa, the director of Sunny Ridge on Friday morning, asking for assistance to find additional staff to fill in for those missing because of the isolations that were due to the outbreak. I contacted County Administrator Adam Payne to get the background information on this situation. And we both got on the phone and called representatives of our local hospitals who agreed to assist having their staff work open shifts at Sunny Ridge. It was great to see the cooperation between these local partners to focus on the problem and make sure that the 94 residents of the nursing home receive proper care. Public health uh, worked with the State Department, uh, of State Department of Health and Family Services and the Bureau of Quality uh, for Appearance and arranged for the uh, Wisconsin National Guard to be mobilized on Sunday. They tested 164 patients and staff and this needed to be done so we truly understand which patients and staff needed to be isolated to deal with this COVID-19 outbreak. Currently, there are 21 active cases of the coronavirus in Sheboygan County. 19 of those 21 cases are associated with the outbreak at Sunny Ridge Nursing Home. My thanks to the great work done by Sheboygan County Public Health, uh, the emergency directors, uh, Steve Steinart and Chuck Butler, uh, Wisconsin Department of Health and Family Assurances, the Bureau of Quality Assurance, and the Wisconsin National Guard, and our local hospitals for the cooperation to control this coronavirus outbreak. During the COVID-19 restrictions, residents have been allowed to go for walks in the community and in our parks. Uh, and currently, the city has also allowed the skate park located at Kiwanis Park and the Frisbee Disc Golf Course at JC Park to be used. I've received reports that some of the residents using these facilities have not been practicing social distancing. Yesterday, we put out a reminder that if these individuals do not either mask up or observe social distancing, that we will have to close these facilities. So we hope that everybody will observe those parameters. Last year, the council approved allowing remote meetings as long as there was a quorum of members at the meeting or attending remotely. With the current pandemic, we have begun to use this new policy to continue to hold all of our normal meetings and the meetings will take place here in the council chambers so that they can easily be broadcast to the community and normal business of city government can continue unimpeded. No one knows when the situation will end. So I'm asking for your patience and understanding during this difficult time. I appreciate the commitment of all the staff here at the city of Sheboygan and our local essential businesses who are doing their best to continue to deliver the services that residents expect. If you're a snowbird or you know a snowbird who has just returned to Sheboygan, we're asking you to see, um, to see that when you come back, uh, please isolate yourself for at least two weeks in your home. Consider getting your groceries or pharmacy delivered or ask another family member in the community to drop them off. By isolating yourself, this will help us to eliminate the community spread of the coronavirus. Yesterday, we held the spring election. This is not something that really should take place during a pandemic, but it did. Uh, early on, the city clerk faced the news that two of the polling locations were not gonna be available. Other locations were obtained and notice was mailed to the voters in those districts. Then as the election approached, about 80 of the 100 poll workers that normally help out asked to be relieved of their duties and uh, because of the coronavirus. The clerk's office put out the call for other residents to consider filling in the ranks in the polls and with this new manpower and some help from city personnel, they were able to staff all the locations. By having all of our polling locations implemented and implementing new measures to reduce the chance for virus transmission, we were able to conduct the election and keep all parties as safe as possible. The total votes cast looks to be just under 10,000 votes, which is about 41% of the registered voters. For comparison, if you go back to 2016 spring election, there were 14,000 votes cast, uh, which was about 60% of the registered voters. 
I want to extend a special thank you to our poll workers, the staff in the clerk's office, and most of all, our city clerk, Meredith De Bruin, for the great job in organizing the spring election in this difficult environment. Let's give her a well-deserved hand. Now remember to wash your hands often, keep a six foot distance from others, cover your cough, stay at home when you're sick, do not assemble in groups, restrict your weekly shopping to, to groceries and pharmacy and take out dining and stay safer at home. Thank you. Next we'll move on to a hearing. Uh, item 2.1 is hearing number 11 of 1920 pursuant to a notice published in the personal notices and sent by the finance director. There is a hearing scheduled for this evening for confirming the exercise of police power and making the assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments uh, are proposed for parking assessment districts number one, two, and four. And five. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Second. That's Donahue. Would the clerk please call the roll? Find the motion. We're doing all four. All four. Yep. Okay. Nine eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, this will include items 3.2 through 3.10. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to, motion to receive and file all the ROs, receive the all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second from Donahue. Thank you for that motion and support. Those items are before us for discussion. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'd ask the clerk to call the roll for passage. Nine eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, item 4.1 is RO number 178 of 1920 by the Director of Planning and Development and Sustainability Coordinator, Coordinator Chad Pelichek submitting the 2019 Green Tier Legacy Communities Annual Report outlining the City of Sheboygan's 2019 sustainable accomplishments and reporting that the document will be submitted to the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to make uh, to receive the RO and file the document. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Second. Thank second you. Donahue. Thank you. That item's before us. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Items uh, 4.2 through 4.4 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 5.1 is resolution number 197 of 1920 by all the persons Wolf and Donahue temporarily waiving delinquent charges relating to the failure to license a dog or cat. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend the rules. Is there any objection to suspension? Okay. Seeing no objections, please proceed. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adopt the resolution. Second from Donahue. Thank you. That item is before us. Is there any discussion? 
Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Items 5.2 through 5.4 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is RC number 291 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred various summonses and complaints reviewed by the staff and recommended to be filed. Uh, Alderperson Donahue. Thank you. I move uh, that the uh, items referred to in the resolution be filed. Second. Boren. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those items or the motion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. <coughs> Item 6.2 is RC number 292 of 1920 by the Public Works Committee, to whom was re referred RC number 184 of 1920 by the Public Works Committee and resolution number 106 of 1920 by Alderpersons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing entering into an agreement with Making Spirits Bright Incorporated for use of Evergreen Park and the Quarry View Center for the annual Making Spirits Bright drive through holiday lights display and recommends filing those documents. I'd entertain a motion from Alderperson Wolf. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and file the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 6.3 is RC number 293 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred RO number 140 of 1920 by the city clerk, submitting a claim from the Sheboygan Area School District for recovery of uh, 2019 property tax for parcel 59281106170 and parcel number 59281106200. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, move to receive the report of the committee and file the claim. Second, Boren. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, Mayor, I had a question. Uh, Go uh, ahead, Boren. I uh, read the. Uh, I read the. Uh, the document and the parcel numbers. Does anybody know uh, there know what the uh, what the uh, parcel numbers reflect? What are those properties? I think that's the the old Maritime Insurance Building and the adjacent parking lot. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 6.4 is RC number 294 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom it was referred RO number 158 of 1920 by the city clerk submitting a claim from Scott Brown for alleged damages to his vehicle when he hit a hole in the road in the intersection of Indiana Avenue and South 13th Street. Alderperson Donahue. I move to receive the report of the committee and file the claim. Second. Boren. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 6.5 is RC number 295 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee 
to whom was referred resolution number 196 of 1920 by all the persons Wolf and Donahue establishing an early retirement incentive program and authorizing the city administrator and acting director of human resources to offer the benefits to qualifying city employees. Alderperson Donahue. I move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Second, Warren. Thank you for that motion and support. That item is before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 6.6. .6. R is RC number 296 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred RC number 343 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee and RO number 215 of 1819 by the City Clerk submitting a claim from Ryan LLC on behalf of their client O'Reilly Automotive Stores Inc for alleged incorrect assessed value of their property for tax purposes. Alderperson Donahue. I move to receive the uh, uh, report of the committee and file the claim. Second, Warren. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 6.7 is RC number 297 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 186 of 1920 by all the persons Donahue and Bourne providing for the sale of $3,100,000 in taxable water uh, utility revenue bond anticipation note series 202B. Uh, all the person Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to uh, receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Second, Warren. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any uh, conversation or discussion on this one? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.8 is RC number 298 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 187 of 1920 by Alder Persons Donahue and Bourne providing for the sale of $4,985,000 in general obligation promissory notes. Uh, series 2020A. Alder Persons Donahue. I move to uh, receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Second, Warren. Thank you for that motion and support. The motion's on the floor for discussion. Seeing no discussion, would the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.9 is RC number 299 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 188 of 1920 by Alder Persons Donahue and Bourne terminating, terminating the City of Sheboygan Tax Incremental District uh, number 11 in authorizing the Finance Director to distribute the excess increment to the overlaying tax districts. Alder Person Donahue. I move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Second, Warren. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, Mayor, I have a, I have a question, uh, something we talked about at the finance and personnel meeting. Please go ahead. 
Thank you, Mayor. I was wondering if Chad could give us a rundown on the uh, on the payout for the uh, TIT 11, uh, how much money the city is, is going to receive. Chad? Just a second. So the, um, the estimates are, so TIT 11 has a fund balance of about 2.6 million. Let me back up. TIT 11 encompasses an area known as the um, Washington Square Mall. So the Piggly Wiggly on the south side, that's primarily that area from west of Business <coughs> Drive and north of Washington Avenue. Uh, that district was created in 1998. It has uh, paid off all its debt and has no outstanding expenditure. So by state law, it requires us to close the district. Um, should the uh, council approve this resolution and the district gets closed, um, the city's portion of the tax bill is about 38%, so the city would see somewhere around $980,000 uh, paid out. The school district is about 36%, so they would see about $936,000. Uh, Lakeshore Technical College is 3% at about $80,000, and Sheboygan County is 22% at about $572,000, and then there's some smaller ones to the state of Wisconsin. So the question at the Finance and personnel meeting was where could these funds be used? I think they're up to the discretion of the city administrator um, as to how we uh, use them, but they do not have to be put back into a TIF district. They can go into the general operating budget. Thank you for that information. Are there any other uh, items if to I discuss? Could, if, I, if, I could just, if I could just follow up on that, Mayor. Go ahead. Uh, Chad mentioned that a little uh, Chad mentioned that that would be the $900,000 would be at the discretion of the city administrator. Uh, will the city administrator come back to finance and personnel with a recommendation on where he wants to put that money so we, we know where it's going? Thank you. City administrator? Yes. Uh, the, the answer to the question is uh, there will be a, a comprehensive recommendation either uh, as part of uh, the development uh, and uh, completion of the 2020 budget, uh, at no later, however, no later than the development of the 2021 budget, will we identify, again, a potential use of those funds. Thank you, gentlemen. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 6.11 is RC number 301 of 1920. 610. 610. I'm sorry. Let's move back to item 610. Is RC number 300 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom is referred RO number 174 of 1920 by the city clerk. Submitting a petition, notice, and list of tax liens of the Sheboygan County that are being foreclosed on and proceeding in REM from 2014, 15, and 16. Uh, Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the report of the committee and file the document. Second, Warren. That item is up for discussion. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Item 6.1 is RC number 301 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom was referred RO number 155 of 1920 uh, by the Finance Director submitting the Operational Organizational Assessment Report dated February 7th of 2020 with regard to the City of Sheboygan Finance and Human Resources Departments, which was prepared by Clifton Larson Allen, LLP, CLA, uh, pursuant to resolution number 206 of 1819, adopted on April 15th of 2019. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to refer this uh, matter to the Finance and Personnel Committee of the 2020 2021 Council. Second, Warren. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 6.12 is RC number 302 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred RO number 166 of 1920 by the Board of Water Commissioners, submitting a communication in anticipation of its raw water improvement intake project, seeking approval to pursue taxable $3,100,000 in water revenue bond uh, anticipation notes to fund engineering costs ahead of the project construction. The, um, the ban would be a four year short term notes having interest only payments made solely from water utility revenues. The ban would have no impact on the city general fund or any other city funding sources. The principal due in 2024 would be refinanced along with the long-term water utility revenue bonds from either the sale of drinking water loan program or from bonds issued in the private marketplace. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the report of the committee and file the document. Second, Warren. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? <clears throat> Nine eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.13 through 6.30 will be referred to um, the 2020-21 uh, council. Under general ordinances, items 7.1 through 7.4 will again be referred to various committees. And under adjournment, I turn it over to Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight.